folks, later we'll announce the winners of the first Lever Fur Contest. But now, Lever Brothers Company, makers of Swan, the soap with the exclusive super creamed blend, presents... Our friend, Swan. With my friend, Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. Friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship when other friendships have been forgotten. Theirs will still be hot. My friend, Irma. Stacy, I'm a girl who never says I know all the answers, but with all modesty, I figure I know my way around. Then suddenly my roommate Irma Peterson comes out with one of her remarks, and mother, I'm back at the lost and found department again. <laughs> Take a classic example like last night. When I came home, I found Irma peering into a large kettle of water in which she dumped a bag of pretzels. Well, that stopped me, so I said, Honey, why are you soaking those pretzels? And Irma said, I couldn't buy any pretzel sticks, so I'm trying to straighten these out. (laughs) For a minute, I was tempted to do the same thing to her. But, knowing Irma, I just forgot the whole thing. Anyway, that was last night. Tonight, I'm going through some letters that have accumulated in the desk. Jane. Dear Jane, just a line to let you... Hmm? What, honey? Why do you save all your old letters? Well, they're mostly from relatives, and since I don't see my relatives very often, it sort of makes me feel they're right here visiting with me. Oh, I know what you mean, Jane. I still have all my old report cards. From school? Yes, they always used to kid me when I was in school. They said I'd never get out of there unless it burned down. Yeah. (laughs) How did you get out? It burned down. (laughs) Jane, you never told me very much about your relatives. Well, honey, there isn't much to tell. Most of my family live in New England. They're fairly successful. My father had a drugstore, and and my mother's just like all mothers, a little beyond the descriptive power of words. Gee, I can still see us on Thanksgiving. You know, Mom would make a turkey, and we'd all gather around help her stuff it. Gee, gee, it makes me homesick. It's the same way at our house. Mother would bake a cake, and, oh, we'd all gather around and help her try to lift it out of the oven. <laughs> You know, honey, while we're on the subject of families, it's just occurred to me that you've been going with Al for quite some time and you know nothing of his background. Come to think of it, I don't. Oh. Did he ever mention any brothers or sisters? No. In fact, he never even mentioned a mother or father. (laughs) He's probably an only child. (laughs) Yeah. Came out of an egg. (laughs) You know, Irma, I I get kind of disgusted with you sometimes. Now, here is a man with whom you're contemplating marriage, and you know nothing about him. Remember, honey, when you marry a man, you marry his family. Come in. It's only me, Professor Kropotkin. (laughs) Hello, Janie and Irma, my two little rooftops, one with a loose shingle. (laughs) Why, Professor? Uh, excuse me, a little joke I picked up from a carpenter. <laughs> well, what's new, Jamie? Oh, Professor, I'm having another one of my sessions with Irma. You see, I'm trying to convince her that it's important that she find out about Al's family as long as she's got matrimony on her mind. Oh, sure, Irma. Jane is right. It's very important that you know the background of the person you intend to marry. You know, there are two things that shape a man's character, heredity and environment. Well, I... Uh, I don't know what they mean. That's simple. Heredity is like when you say, his father was a bum and he's a bum. (laughs) What's environment? That's when you come from a house full of bums. (laughs) Of course, Derma, I know sometimes it's hard to trace a man's origin. Take me. I can't tell you where I was born because I don't know. Why not? When I was a little baby, I was found by a band of gypsies. For 12 years, I lived in a cave. It was dark and wet and cold. Oh, that's terrible. What do you mean terrible? I live better then than I do now upstairs. (laughs) 
but fortunately, I turned out to be a charming fellow. <laughs> well, I think Al is all right, and I don't want to private, pry into his private life. Come in. Hello, girls. Oh, it's you, Mrs. O'Reilly. Come on in. Oh, there you are, Professor. Janie, hold her back. Why? What, 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 what's wrong? What happened? Oh, I don't mind a little kidding about me age, but this time the professor's gone too far. Look at the note I found on the big door. Let me see. Yesterday was Washington's birthday, so I must stick to the facts. When Washington chopped down the cherry tree, tell me, Mrs. O'Reilly, did you hand him the axe? <laughs> Professor. Well, you tell her to leave me alone. One minute she flirts with me, and the next she nags me for the rent. I don't want to have anything to do with her for love or money. Oh, you! No, 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 please, the two of you, now, now, hush. Uh, look, Irma, to get back to Al and his family... Oh, it's no use talking. I'm not going to ask Al about his family background. Oh, but you should, me darling. I remember when I was a young girl... Oh, it seems like yesterday. <laughs> Believe me, Mrs. O'Reilly, it's been a long day in between. <laughs> Go on with you. What I'm trying to say is that one day I met a policeman on a horse. <gasps> what a beautiful animal. In two weeks we were married. <laughs> Where did you go on your honeymoon? Santa Anita? <laughs> now, listen here, you. I don't mind your picking on me, but I'm trying to explain to Irma how important a man's family is. Sure, sweetie. We're just doing it for your own good. If Al was half a man, he'd tell you about himself. Well, Jane, don't be ridiculous. If he was half a man, he'd be too short for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that must be Al. Come in. Hello, Jane. Hi, chicken. Hello, Al, honey. We were just running along, Al. Come on, Mrs. O'Reilly. I got a surprise for you. A surprise? Certainly. I'll show you the new window the wind put in my wall. <laughs> Goodbye, girls. Sorry they went. Wanted to tell them about my new deal. Oh, no. Another one of your deals? What is it this time, Al? Putting feathers on frogs and selling them for squabs? <laughs> oh, no. Nothing so amateurish. Got one a little off the beaten track. It's a special jacket for suspicious characters. So when a cop says, stick him up, a skirt falls down, he ain't got the nerve to frisk it. Gosh, Jane, wasn't it lucky? Wasn't I lucky to, to hook a fella like Al? I'm not so sure. I'd like to see the ones that got away. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take a shower. Uh, honey, where's my shower cap? Oh, I lent it to Professor Kropotkin. It rained last night. Oh, it's grand. Well, I won't wet my hair. I'll just stand on my head. Caustic character. Well, Chicken, what are we waiting for? Let's you and I take over the sofa. No, Al, I, I don't sit on the sofa with strangers. Strangers? Chicken, what are you talking about? Al, I don't know anything about you. Chicken, do you like the way I put my arms around you? Yes. You like the way I kiss you? The way I let you sit on my lap? Yes. And how can you say you don't know anything about me? That's beside the point. A man's lap has nothing to do with his background. Chicken, I don't get it. Al, before I let you kiss me, I I'd like to know something about your family tree. Chicken, I don't like this question. Shows a lack of trust. And true love can only exist on mutual confidence. It's got to be 50-50. What do you mean, 50-50? You don't ask me any questions, I don't give you any answers. You get it? Yes, that's 50-50. Okay, chicken, let's get back to the sofa. Oh, Al, we're not making any progress. But getting back to the sofa, to me, that's progress. <laughs> oh, Al, I insist on knowing about your family. Well, chicken, if nothing else will satisfy you, there's only one man who can help us. Who, Al? Who else but... Hello, Joe. <laughs> Al, got a problem. Joe, your folks used to know most of my relatives. I I've been away so long, I kind of forgot. What were they like? Uh-huh. 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 Mm-hmm. What else is new, Joe? <laughs> no, no, Joe, thanks. You don't have to give me the visiting days. Them joints give me the chills. <laughs> hey, goodbye, Joe. Well, did you find out anything about your family? Joe didn't know a thing. 
were you saying about visiting days? Uh, they're all expecting babies. Al, you're not fooling me. You don't want me to know about your family. Oh, look, chicken, can't we discuss this some other time? I gotta meet the boys. So I think I'll be running along. But chicken, ain't you gonna kiss me? No, Al. You have no sisters, no brothers, no cousins or uncles, no one to identify you. How do I know it's you? <laughs> no, Al. Goodbye. Well, if that's the way you feel, where's my coat? Goodbye. <laughs> Mama! Well, honey, you're crying. Where's Al? Gone. <laughs> oh, sweetie. Well, don't cry, sweetie. He'll be back. Oh, gee, it's all my fault. I shouldn't have insisted in finding out about his past. After all, you love the guy, and I... Irma, what's that envelope on the floor by your feet? Envelope? Oh, this? Yeah. Is it yours? No. Oh, Jane, it has Al's name on it. M maybe he left me a note. I'll read it. Yeah, honey, honey, if it's addressed to Al, you shouldn't read his mail. It, it... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jane. What is it, sweetie? It's a letter to Al from another woman. It says, Dear baby, I just read your last letter and it brought back those tender moments when I held you in my arms. Oh. <laughs> Jane, I hate him. I hate him. Oh, honey, let me see that letter. Huh. Elizabeth, New Jersey. Oh, so that's her name. <laughs> well, as far as I'm concerned, he can have Miss Jersey. <laughs> Ladies, for fast dishwashing and protection for your hands, Swan is the answer. Because Swan's exclusive super-creamed blend means faster suds in the dishpan. Suds that rinse away so completely dishes never need drying. Super-creamed blend protects your hands, too. They're left as smooth and lovely as ever. Yes, Swan is the perfect dishwashing soap, thanks to Swan's exclusive super-creamed blend. And ladies, listen for the names of the big contest winners later in the program. heart is broken. Just broken. I've never seen her so upset since the night she thought Al called her an animal because he invited her to the Elks dinner. <laughs> anyway, now she's convinced that Al is leading a double life, and since in a way I'm kind of responsible for the turn of events, I've decided to get to the bottom of this whole affair, and I've phoned Al to come right over. Come in. Oh, Janie. Well, where's Irma? She went out. Al? I want to start off by telling you that I think you are the lowest type of cad there is. And that your despicable behavior is only equaled by your unmitigated, low-down, conniving methods. Look, Jane, if you call me down here just for a character analysis... Oh. <laughs> could you do such a horrible thing? What horrible thing? Well, all right, I'll come to the point. Who is this other woman you've been running around with? Other woman? Jane, what kind of a dope do you take me for? I love Irma. Now, listen, Al, you're not playing with children. Take a look at this letter. Irma found it. Let me see. My darling baby. Oh, so that's where I lost it. Jane, this is part of a letter my mother wrote to me. Your mother? You have a mother? <laughs> Well, sure I got a mother. How do you think I got here? War surplus? <laughs> I got a mother in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Well, why have you been keeping it a secret? I can understand your mother not wanting it to get around, but I... Uh, <laughs> but, but surely Irma should know. Well, I, I know, Jane, but it's a pretty delicate situation. You see, I'm all my mom has got in this world, and, well, I've been sort of pulling a little wool over her eyes. You mean she thinks you're working? Yeah, more than that. I told her I'm a big success. See, I sent her half my unemployment check, and with the little that Pop left her, she gets by okay. And I I'd rather die than disillusion her. Yeah, but, but Al, doesn't she question the fact that you only send her $10 if you're so important? 
Well, she did. But I explained that if I didn't practice thrift, I would never have become president of General Motors Corporation. <laughs> Al, how could you ever get your mother to believe that? Oh, I had Joe print up these letterheads. Yeah, let me see. General Motors Corporation. Assets, $60 million. President, Al. <laughs> Address, main office, general delivery, box 42, New York City. Oh, Al. You think I'm a crumb, huh, Jane? No. No, Al, I, I, I think I kind of like you a little more than I did five minutes ago. I wouldn't want you to hurt your mother. Oh, thanks, Jane. I, I figured you'd understand. Yeah, but I'm the smallest part of your problem, Al. Irma is certain you're carrying on with another girl, and there's only one way to clear the whole thing up. Oh. Invite your mother over here so we can meet her. Uh, then Irma will see for herself. Well, I want Mom to meet Irma, but I'm afraid she might learn the truth about me, and that'd break her heart. Yeah, but don't worry, Al. I'll back you up in everything you say. When I'm finished, your mother will think you own the Taj Mahal. Okay, Jane, I'll call her up and have her here in an hour. Good, Al, that'll be fine. I'm sure Irma will have finished committing suicide by then and she'll be back. <laughs> right, Jane. And, and look, whatever you do, no remarks about me being unemployed. Oh, huh? no, no. Uh, but, but, Al, how, how about your suit? Huh? How will you explain all those creases? Looks like it's been pressed in a mix master. <laughs> oh, uh, I always tell Mom I don't have time to go to the bank and my pockets are full of stocks and bonds. <laughs> Come right in. Hello, Amber. Irma, what are you doing up here in the Bronx? Oh, Amber, I'm in the dumps. Look, dearie, this place is just as good as where you live. <laughs> I didn't mean that, Amber. Oh, oh. Irma, you're crying. Oh, oh, Amber, it's happened. I'm miserable. That can only mean one thing. You got married. Oh, no, no, Amber. I never want to look another man in the face, and his name is Al. What happened, dearie? My Al is a two-timer. He's been going out with another woman. Oh, it's the same old story. You never can trust a man. And if you do find one you can trust, he ain't worth trusting. <laughs> oh, Amber, I'm so disappointed... I always thought my Al was different from other men. Well, he is different. He don't work. <laughs> Say, how did you find out about this other woman, Irma? Oh, I found a letter from her. Oh, Amber, it's so hard to believe. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe, maybe Al can explain it somehow. Dearie, they all have alibis. He'll give you some line like, uh, like it was his dear old mother. Well, don't fall for it. So many guys have used that excuse when they two-time me that for a while I thought every day was Mother's Day. <laughs> but, Amber, I love him, and, and I'd like to give him a, a chance to explain. I, I know he wouldn't pull that old mother line on me. Well, go ahead and find out. Cool him up. I think I will. And I'll show him. And just for that, I won't tell him about that extra unemployment check waiting for him. Hello? Hello, Albert? Chicken! I've been trying to reach you. Don't you chicken me, you... you... Amber, is this a party line? Yeah. Al, someday if you ever call me on a private wire, I'll tell you what I think of you. No, no, wait a minute, Irma. I can explain. That letter you found is from my mother. Your mother? Amber, you were right. Chicken, I don't know what you're mumbling about, but I'm bringing my mother to your apartment in an hour. So you be there to meet her, huh? Goodbye. Well, dearie, he says it's his mother. Ha! <laughs> but Al is bringing over to my apartment to meet me. Ha! <laughs> He's probably having his girlfriend dress up like an old lady just to fool you. If I were you, the minute I got in the door, I'd grab her wig and pull it right off. <laughs> no, I'm still a lady, Amber. I just want to tell Al what I think of him, that's all. Yeah, well... Well, well, just tell him he's a, he's a 20th century bluebeard with the spine of a jellyfish, and you've had your fill of his line, and that somewhere there's a man who'd like to meet a nice blonde like you. Thanks, Amber. I'll try to remember. And look, Amen. 
Don't worry about losing that guy, Al. You can always get a fell up here in the Bronx. They may not be Noel Coward, but to me, pants is pants. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Jane. I'd like to have you meet my mother. Just call her Mom. Oh, I'm very glad to know you, Mom. Come on in. Make yourself comfortable. Oh, thank you, Jane. Albert has told me all about you. Where's Irma? Oh, she'll be here shortly. I, I, I was just about to have some tea. Will you join me? Oh, thank you. I drink as much tea as I can. You see, I feel that it helps Albert. Helps Albert? Yes, it comes from India. And Albert tells me he has a place there called the Taj Mahal. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> well, Mom, I, I'm, uh, I'm surprised I haven't met you before, but I don't suppose you come to Manhattan very often. No, I don't like to bother my Albert. You see, I'm just a little old lady, and my son is so busy and so important. After all, it takes time to run a big business like General Motors and General Electric. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. Did you say General Motors and General Electric? Certainly. He also owns General Mills. <laughs> but he doesn't talk about that. That's just for pin money. Yes, I understand. I keep telling Albert he shouldn't work so hard. After all, one million more or less, what does it matter? Your health comes first. Ah, oh, ma. <laughs> Well, I guess it's better than having a son who's lazy and un unambitious. Why, I understand some men never work at all. They just sit around and collect unemployment checks every week. But not my Albert. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. It got kind of hard to swallow. The tea, that is. As you were saying, I suppose uh, men like that are pretty low. Yes, but thank goodness my Albert is different. I was so afraid he'd be like his father. Albert Sr. He never worked? No, he was always working on some kind of a deal, but never made a nickel. <laughs> Married 30 years and didn't start to support me until after he passed away. <laughs> uh, well, that's life. Insurance. I, uh, I wonder what's keeping chicken. Oh, I'm so anxious to meet her, Jane. She must be a wonderful girl, judging by the way Albert always describes her in his letters. Has she got a good head on her shoulders? Uh, well, she has a pretty head on her shoulders. But is she smart? Uh, well, she's, uh, uh... Oh, here, here's Irma right now. <laughs> Hello, honey. Hi, uh, chicken. Al, you are a 20th century fish not filled up with jelly. And there are plenty of men who would like a blonde girl with a blue beard. <laughs> Hold it, chicken. Irma, this is my mother. Oh, yeah. Irma. Please, I'm not so dumb. Oh, I'm glad. They kept avoiding that question. <laughs> Al, who do you think you're kidding? Uh, what's new, Elizabeth? Elizabeth? Irma, listen, listen. This is Al's mother. She comes from Elizabeth, New Jersey. You... Oh, you mean... Oh... Oh, Al, I'm so ashamed I... Oh, well, Irma, it's gotcha. very hard for most people to believe that a plain little lady like me could be the mother of such an important man. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> Forget bygones, Irma. All right, and... Oh, and to think I was so angry... Why, I wasn't going to tell you that there's an extra check for you at the unemployment office. No, yes, you, you, you see, yes, they, they wanted Al to, to, to yeah. check on, on how many men he needs for his new uh, 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 magnesium plant. <laughs> I think it was um, 65,000. A magnesium plant? So many men. Uh, but, but yes, to, uh, to, to milk all them cows. <laughs> I'm going to make milk of magnesium. <laughs> oh, but you don't understand. The, the man at the unemployment... Yes, Irma, uh, honey, Irma, but, uh, uh, da, uh, uh, Irma dear, uh, honey, uh, honey well, uh, let's all go out and have dinner, shall, shall we? Oh, that's a great idea, but, but it's got to be on me, understand? Uh, understand? <laughs> 
No, no, Al, no. You've been treating us to so many parties on your yacht and, uh, and, and taking us to theaters and banquets and everything, and, and I insist on paying. Well, I'll give in this time. <laughs> this song won't make you class conscious. Here's my arm, Mother. Here's your ten dollars, Al. Let's go. Folks, in just a minute, there'll be an open telegram to the big winner in the first week of the $100,000 Lever Fur Contest, as well as the names of second prize winners. But first, have you entered this exciting fur contest yet? Here's all you do. In 25 words or less, tell why you like any one of these six Lever products. Swan Soap, Lux Flakes, Lux Toilet Soap, Life Boy, Rinso, or Spry. Enter as many times as you wish. The contest is subject to rules on the entry blank at your dealers. Just enclose with each entry a wrapper or a box top from any one of these Lever products. And remember, there are 1,645 prizes in all, 329 each week. Yes, each week there are prizes like these. One $3,000 mink coat, three $1,000 fur coats, five smart fur jackets worth $500, as well as 320 other prizes of valuable furs and cash. But now... An open telegram to the big winner of the first week's Lever Fur Contest. To Mrs. John D. Hargrave, 158 Brantley Street, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia. You win a $3,000 mink coat or the cash. Congratulations, Mrs. Hargrave. Here are the names of the second prize winners who win beautiful $1,000 fur coats or the cash. Mrs. Helen Hass, Cleveland, Ohio. Mrs. Mildred Sayward, South Windham, Maine. Mrs. Louis Binder, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The other 325 winners of valuable furs and cash will be notified by mail. It's not too late to enter. This week's contest closes February 29th. Think how grand you'd look in a gorgeous $3,000 mink coat. Send your entry now to Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York City. That's Lever Fur Contest, Box 1, New York City. dinner, and it's really a wonderful family gathering. Irma is terribly happy because she's just turned to the mother of the president of General Motors, General Electric, and General Mills and Points West and said, Please don't worry, Mother. When Al and I get married, you're not losing a son. You're gaining a wife. <laughs> and you know, if that makes sense to you, you're no better off than my friend Irma. My Friend Irma, presented by Swan, another fine product of Lever Brothers Company, was produced and directed by Cy Howard. Tonight's script was written by Cy Howard and Park Levy. Folks, next Monday evening, listen again to... Our Friend Swan. With My Friend Irma. Starring Mary Wilson as Irma and Kathy Lewis as Jane. The part of Professor Kropotkin was played by Hans Conried. Ladies, listen. The shortage of fats and oils is still very serious, and it's worldwide. So please keep on saving every drop of used kitchen fat. Your butcher will pay you for every pound. Frank Bingman speaking. Spry. Cakes are light and high. Spry. There's a reason why. Spry. Cakes improve with Spry. Rely on Spry. You bet there's a reason why Spry is the cake-making wonders. Spry has an amazing cake improver secret. Try the sure spry one bowl way and be certain of lighter, finer, richer cakes every time. No other type of shortening has spry's cake improver secret. For new cake making success, rely on spry. Pure all vegetable spry with cake improver. Rely on spry. S P R Y. Rely on spry. S P R Y. Tune in next week one hour earlier and listen to the Lux Radio Theater immediately followed by my friend Irma. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Broadcasting System.